Hi guys! In this Krita video I'll cover keyboard shortcuts that activate Pi menus providing a quicker access to your favorite brush presets, tools and commonly used properties. I'll also show you how to select layers by sliding a mouse, undo and read operations by sliding a mouse, and switch various brush properties by yeah, sliding a mouse. And last but not least, we'll assign multiple actions to a single shortcut. Now, if you wonder, how on earth didn't you know about any of these? Uh, yeah, sorry, that's just one of my Python plugins. But no, 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 please don't go. The plugin is free of charge and really, installing it is not that different from updating Krita to a new version or downloading random brush packs from the internet. You follow a link from the description of this video, download a zip file using this green code button, and then you simply import the whole thing from within Krita using a built-in tool. See, it wasn't that bad. After restarting the app, you should see all those juicy new shortcuts waiting for you to explore them in the shortcut settings. Don't they look lovely together? Although currently Python plugins work only on desktop operating systems. If you're using Krita on Android, then these are not supported there yet. There's plenty of new features to talk about, so let's not make this introduction any longer. Let's start big, huh? Pi menus are widgets displayed on the canvas while the assigned key is pressed. As with any action from this plugin, you are supposed to set your own shortcuts in Krita settings first. Then the widget opens and closes when you press and release the key sequence you've chosen. I designed it to visually resemble the right mouse button pop-up a bit, but with a few usability differences. 1. You can have multiple Pi menus under different keys and 2. Instead of clicking the icon, you only move the cursor in the right direction and release the keyboard button to set it. A behavior inspired by the menus you can stumble upon in Blender and many video games. After picking up bindings, you receive access to three color coded brush selectors, each connected to one tag with brushes. And I think I know what you think now. You do want to set your own brushes here, don't you? So head to the plugin settings located in the Krita top bar. By the way, this is the place where you can configure this and other plugin features as well. Brush presets are not the only property that can be changed with Pi menus. Pick MISC tools accesses some sporadically used tools which may not be worth separate shortcut anymore. Pick painting blending modes is for, <laughs> well, picking blending modes. And something I hope you didn't expect, with pick transform tool modes, you can access liquify, mesh and other transform modes. For this, I had to create some casual crit actions, so as a side effect, if you ever missed this, you'll find them in the Utilities tab now. While Pi menus may look impressive in the video, still the thing I'm proud of the most are my cursor trackers. Just check this out. Pressing a key down turns on the isolate layer mode, which temporarily hides all the other layers. It goes back to normal as soon as I release the button. That's already pretty useful as you can quickly check out what's on the current layer without having to turn its visibility on and off like a madman. But the real fun begins when you start moving your pen up and down while holding the button pressed. It scrolls the layer stack, displaying the artwork layer by layer. Nice for analyzing the document structure as it gives some deeper understanding of what is where. It also works nicely for switching layers in the canvas only mode where you have limited access to the layer docker. If you're an animator, here's a variation of the previous tool for you. Instead of scrolling through the entire stack, you can do so only on the layers pinned to an animation timeline. And if you use the same button, but scroll horizontally, you can change the current frame and preview the animation on the active layer. Staying on the topic, there are two more actions regarding layers I've crafted for you. One is super simple, as it only toggles the visibility of the active layer and brings it back on the key release. A small thing, but enough fun to keep it in the plugin, I think. The second one is slightly more sophisticated. For as long as the button is pressed, it hides all the layers above the active one. So now you can temporarily remove everything that covers the area you paint on. Both actions are preview only, so they always go back to the original state as soon as you release the key. Scroll undo stack can be used as an alternative for the action under Ctrl Z. While repeatedly pressing the key works exactly the same as in the original undo action, you can now press and hold to control the undo history. 
moving the pen left or right, performs multiple undo and redo operations. Maybe not that useful as it looks at first glance, but say it, it does feel great, doesn't it? No Krita property is safe from my cursor trackers. A single button for controlling brush settings lets you change brush size or opacity depending on whether you scroll horizontally or vertically. The size snaps to specific values, as I thought some pixel artists may like to keep this round, while the opacity is continuous and stops at 10%. Maybe it's nothing really new, as there are default shortcuts for this already in Krita, but now it's possible to have canvas zoom and rotation, both under the same button. Okay, we're done with cursor tracking actions, I guess. So let's move on to the next group. Yup, there's more. The idea behind those is that you assign multiple values of a single Krita property to one shortcut. Pressing a key once activates the first one, and then each press moves you to the next. It can be a tool, slider value, or whatever else you may want to. Each of those actions have one special value, which you can activate by holding a key a little bit longer. Here you can access some of the most useful selection tools. Freehand, rectangular and continuous. You may wonder why not use a pie menu for that, as you know I could do that and already did with the Moscolanus tools. But there is a particular reason for it. You see, unlike with pie menus, you can still use those tools while keeping the key pressed. So you can press a button, make a fast selection of freehand tool, release it and you're back to brush tool. Pain and select, pain and select, pain and select. <laughs> Got the idea, right? The second action like this is for changing brush opacity and it's a similar story here. You can change the opacity to 70, 50 or 30% with short presses, but you can also use it as a modifier which makes your brush temporarily lighter. Your pen feels too strong, so you press a button, do a stroke or two and release the key which brings it back to normal. Anyway, give it a try as it feels really useful for how simple it is. Hard to believe, but we're finally heading to the end of this list. The last group of actions is called temporary keys and it's for switching between two values of one property. Temporary eraser may be known to some of you who used the previous version of this plugin. Press shortly to toggle the eraser on and off, long press to make sure it's on and release the key to turn it back off. Then you also have temporary preserve alpha and temporary move tool. Long press the first one to restrict the painting only to what's already on the layer and long press the temporary move tool to quickly move layers around and be back to the brush tool as soon as you release the key. Pfft, that's everything. Now it's time for you to put those new tools in action, so let me know how you like them. Cheers!